Welcome to Friday Focus, July 8th, 2016. We'll talk about two things today and how they sort of interplay. So when we look at uh, new patients, that's what drives our business. You know, we have different sources of new patients. We have new patients that are that are marketed. And we have new patients that are referred. And when we started this, our business out, we did mostly marketing for new patients because most doctors and patients really weren't aware of what we were doing. So we did direct-to-consumer marketing that worked really good. And now we're trying to change our focus and in my head I'm thinking we should almost be like an invitation only practice where people are being referred to us so we know we're getting good candidates or doctors are referring their patients. And the patients that that's referred in by somebody else, they're more likely to be a good candidate for what we had to offer. We know we're more likely to like them because they, you know, we like our patients, they send us somebody like themselves. The new patient that gets referred by their friend is going to be referred in without having a total misconception of what things cost or what results are, what expectations are. A doctor refers a, pain, a vein patient, a dermatology patient in, we know that's going to, they're going to have the, the actual disease rather than trying to figure out what they got wrong with them. So these are really what kind of we want to go is towards the referral pattern. We'll still do some marketing, but that's something over time we're going to kind of, kind of slow that down and really ramp up on the referrals. Right now we have physician liaisons that go to doctor's offices and they talk to about the services that we do and we're sending letters to the doctors that thank them for referrals. In fact, the best way to, the best way to increase uh, physician referrals is communicate with physicians. Right now we're kind of struggling with that, so we're going to put some mechanisms in place. We can get a better job of, of letting the doctors know we appreciate their business. We certainly want our patients to know that we appreciate them referring their family and friends. We appreciate them trusting us to do our family and friends, to refer their family and friends to us. It means that they have confidence in us. So new patients is a market driver and that's what our, you know, our business is based on. Last week I talked about you know, revenue for new patient, how you decide whether or not, you know, or how you determine the revenue we get per new patient based on you know, rebooking, get them, getting them from a consult into a service versus somebody who's not getting anything done. The second part is, you know, why do we exist? And one of the reasons we exist is we, we exist in order to bring out the person you were expected to be, the person you were meant to be. Allure exists to bring out the person you are meant to be. We bring that up, we mean that for our patients and for ourselves. And one thing that I think we need to be understanding as an office and even as individuals, that we should be more giving. You know, that, that's what we're meant to be. We're meant to be more giving. You know, you work, you take care of your family, but we, there's other people who are less fortunate than us. And sometimes you might have bias and say, well, you know, they should be working like I do, or I don't need to get the charities. They could just like pull themselves up by their bootstraps and, and make it happen, or you know, why are they homeless or hungry and, and they, they shouldn't be all they have to do is work. Well, you know, God didn't say feed the hungry unless they didn't work or in a case you're lazy. He just said feed the hungry. I mean, that's just like we're commanded to do. And to bring us to the kind of people we need to be, we need to be a more giving office, more giving individuals. So what we're gonna do is combine two things between giving and then our patients giving us the referrals of their friends. So every new patient that's referred by one of our existing patients, we're gonna donate $100 to charity, the practices. And we have charities, Mary's gonna talk about those in a minute, the ones that we thought were pretty neutral, you know, try not donating to any like, select personal charities. These are the charities that our group kind of picked would be ones that we would wanna support and we want to be able to understand the connection between new patients, that's something that somebody's giving us, and we should be giving away too, okay? So we've got a successful life here at Allure. Uh, we've done very well. We've got good jobs and job security. But another thing is, what are we doing to give, to give back to our community? And some people I know are going to the soup kitchen and helping out, going to Samaritan House and helping to feed the hungry, and that's very important. Giving your time is, is an extremely valuable thing to do. We can also give away resources to help people out. And I want you to individually at your huddle be aware of what we're giving away. This is you, you're asking for the referrals. You're, you personally are asking for the referrals. So the patients that you're working with are sending us their family and friends. And Allure, in thanking you, is gonna give away $100 to the charity of choice. So I want you to be aware of that. And at the huddle, Mary's gonna send out a text message to people at the offices of how many referrals came in from your office, and even the names of the people who referred. 
that should be happening within a week or so. So that way you can identify that patients that, you know, referred you patients, you can tell them thank you. Thanks, thanks for your referral. Let them know we're, we're, we're giving the charity in their, in their name. So that's the Friday Focus. Mary's going to go over the charities and thank you very much. Hi everyone. What I want to do now is to give each of you a little bit of insight into the charities that we selected. When we started uh, working on the framework for this program, what we wanted to do was to come up with charities that were going to benefit the most vulnerable people in our community. And a couple of things came to mind. Um, the homeless. Obviously, um, you know, with the economy and things that happened over the last couple of years, we, we do have a homeless problem in the city of Detroit. So one of our selections is COTS, which is short for the Coalition on Temporary Shelter. This is a really impressive charity that's been around since the 1980s and what they do is not only provide individuals uh, with a place to stay, but they actually help them um, giving them building blocks to try and rebuild their lives. We wanted to do something that benefited children and one of the things that we think um, is probably, how do I put this, um, the most tragic thing that can occur is when a, a child gets sick. And so we selected a local charity, um, Kids Without Cancer. It's an organization that um, provides uh, research for children with cancer. They're actually building a new lab down at Wayne State University. So if you go on their website, you can read a little bit more about their story. Um, we all love animals. I know I, I talk with all of you about your pets. Um, we all have a soft spot, spot in our hearts for um, animals, particularly animals that are homeless or abused. So we are working with the Michigan Pet Fund Alliance, which is a shelter that um, is no kill. So animals that go there are you know, taken care of, receive veterinary services, food, and whatever they need until they're able to be placed into a permanent home. And last but not least, we are an organization that is made up primarily of women. So we are working with the local chapter of Dress for Success of Michigan. And for those of you that are not familiar with this organization, what they do is provide women that have been either in abusive relationships, they've been homeless, or any other number of unfortunate things that can occur with what they need to start to rebuild their lives. They give them coaching to go out on job interviews and re-enter the workforce, everything from um, coaching and interview skills to an outfit to wear on a job interview. So they're another organization that is very you know, near and dear to all of our hearts. So those are the four that we've picked. When we launch this program, anyone that refers a patient to our practice is gonna receive a note in the mail with a little bit of information about each one of these charities requesting that they fill out the card and get back to us. Um, and then we, in turn, at the end of the month, will tally those up and be distributing checks to each one of these four very worthwhile organizations. So please join me in trying to make this program as successful as possible because, as Dr. Moak said, what we're really looking to do here is to take our marketing dollars and rather spend them on advertising to reinvest that money into our community. So thank you very much. Hey folks, I got some breaking news. Uh, we won Crane's Business Cool Places to Work in Michigan. And sometimes I know it's not cool and it's kind of busy and kind of hectic, but overall we want to be a cool place to work. And I'm looking forward to another, another cool year. So let's congratulate ourselves. Cool place to work. Thank you.